Hello everybody, it's the City Mad Haven here today, and this is like take number freaking 90. Oh my god. Like, I just keep on making like simple mistakes, just little mistakes, and I'm just like, yeah, we're, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna try again, and try again, and, and try again. But you know what? That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to try and give you guys the best content that I can possibly make. So, today we're gonna be taking a look at the FB. 4202p it is a british tier 8 premium and it's been in the game for a long time so yeah it doesn't matter whenever you're catching this video it's old seriously this thing has like so much dust built up on it that i was not even able to get it off myself to be honest with you took a minute to get used to just because it, it this is one of those tanks that i don't play too often because it, it's really it doesn't Fit my play style compared to a lot of other tanks, but I, I've tried my hardest inside this tank, and I tried really nice to get some matches in it. Lucky for me, um, one of the first three matches I did play inside this tank, I had a decent one that I could show off, because I know how the armor works, I know how the tank is set up, I know what to expect out of it whenever it comes down to the matchmaking. Whenever this tank is bottom tier, it tends to suffer just a little bit, depending on what you're going up against but the turret armor on this tank it's not exactly the greatest so let's go ahead let's dive right in the tanks gg here we're going to be comparing the tank to absolutely nothing there's no point to compare it to anything because against itself we're going to be able to show off the weak spots we don't need heat pin we don't need anything crazy to show off against this tank to see what the penetration should be like so top plate here you know you're looking at 28 millimeters 28 point six up on the top which means that 30 millimeters are going to be able to go right through that plate up on the top along with that the lower armor here once you hit your 60 6.5 degrees of gun depression it's going to become an auto ricochet along with that the side armor we're looking at you know 50 millimeters of side armor at a nice good slope too and you know a little bit of a v shape which means you can over angle a little bit actually speaking of which let's see how much we can over angle before we start losing the auto ricochet so about 23 degrees all along the back side however if people have really good crews and they're able to hit the back of the you know, back of the tank slight little piece sticking out of there 10 millimeters which means if you're in the front of this and you're firing high explosives you will be able to hit that i have landed a couple shots there myself in the past but they're really hard to land especially at a range if they're side scraping you know a little bit of a better chance to hit it but you know, dispersion values take a play as RNG rolls. Really, this is kind of like a one in a hundred shot, one in a million shot, and don't even try to rely on trying to get that shot. No point. But the tank itself, once you max out your gun depression, you know, it doesn't really matter the angle that we're at here. You know, your top plate, heat rounds are going to be able to go through this. Over on PC, they put a buff in this tank, which they buff the armor by 0.8 millimeters, so 0.8 which prevents 152 millimeters from going through the armor. So specifically, most of the Russian tank destroyers, the 705A, the 50TP, however, the OE3, OE5, anything with the 155 or bigger is going to be able to overmatch your armor with ease. So really, the tank itself, against smaller caliber guns, against 120, so most tier 9s, most tier 10s that you know have 120s and everything else you're gonna be able to go up against them but one of the problems that i do have inside this tank is whenever i get shot in the lower plate or the top plate for instance top plate yeah i don't know why i said lower plate uh, as i said restarts lots of them but we're good today we're, we're good now now every once in a while you'll have a shell hit your hull armor and bounce into the lower part of the turret bounce into your cheek and it, it's just not going to feel that comfortable at all it just hurts it sucks and it happens quite a bit. So shell velocity, we'll take a look at shell velocity, which honestly we're gonna have to do over here on the module viewer inside console because tanks GG shell velocity, uh, they don't show you the shell velocity over on the actual website here. You know, going through this, you're not gonna be able to find it. But 1,020 on your standards, 1,275 on your premiums, and your high explosive, you're looking at 1,020 as well. So honestly, your standards and your high explosives, same travel velocity. This is a 20 pounder gun type B barrel, which is used on a lot of the British tanks that are right now inside the game. So, you know, the Centurions, the Rack, you have the Huntsman, the Atomic, they all use the same gun. So if you know how that gun works, you're going to be able to use this one without a problem on the FE-202P. So starting off, we have 226 base pin, 258 premium pin, 
42 millimeters of high explosive pin. The high explosives, honestly, I, I have gotten a couple of these high explosives to pin. I have had a, a high roll of like 310, but primarily their penetration is not super high. I actually prefer to use the high explosives out of this tank specifically for knocking over trees, setting up an area, making a nest. If you guys know what that means, seriously, make a nest. It's the greatest thing. It can help get your win rate up. It can help you inside your tank destroyers. It could probably be that little bit of extra help, depending on the map you're on, to help you try and get your first mark, second, or even your third mark on a tank. You know, high explosive rounds and trees, knocking out trees that are outside the skirts of the map, shooting one of those, dropping them inside the map to get the extra concealment from it. You know, just little ideas here to help you guys out. Now, the damage... 230 for, you know, your AP and your premium rounds, which most tanks are exactly the same, except for the ISU-130. It gets a 575, 560 alpha, not 570, but, you know, 187 pin on that tank. Honestly, really hard to use, but if you can make use of it, fantastic. Now, still concealment, you're looking at 0.28. You know, it, it's, it, it's pretty low, but at the same time, it's on the higher side. It's, it's comparable to some of the worst light tanks with concealment. And keep in mind, that's comparing it to a light tank with some of the worst light tanks inside the game. So, primarily this tank, honestly, as a medium, you have fantastic concealment. Jumping down over to the gun, 7.5 rounds a minute. 8 second reload. You can get that reload down to about 5.8 seconds. If you have a fully trained crew, born leader, rapid loading, and, you know, a gun rammer. Kind of needed. Or advanced loader now, I think is what they call it. I, I really don't like how they changed all the names. Confused with the crap out of me. 390 base view range. You're going to be able to get this up to 454 with situational awareness and coded optics or advanced optics now. I, as I said, they changed names and it completely screwed me up. And it's been screwing me up for quite some time. Dispersion values, you're looking at 0.33. Depression, 10 degrees. However, whenever you try looking over the rear of the tank, you're only going to be able to get 2 degrees out of your gun depression. Or if you try and get along like the back side of the tank, you're going to be looking at 6.8 and slowly decreasing from there until you're looking over the rear. So if you have to engage somebody from behind, you're better off trying to run away, clutch break, or you know just activate clutch, which is usually, if you're using default settings on your remote, down in the D-pad, mouse and keyboard, it's going to be the space bar. This tank actually performs really good with clutch braking, so if you guys want to try and handle that, or you want to have a fun experience inside this tank, drive down a hill, hit your clutch brake, do a complete flip. I have done multiple 180s inside this tank. It feels really good. Now, taking a look at the engine, we got 650 horsepower. Along with that, you know, 15.63 power to weight, 50 top speed, 20 reverse speed, 20% fire chance. The fire chance, I have not yet been set on fire in my FV, but, you know, now that I said that, something tells me the next time I pull it out, I'm going to be... I'm going to be cooking just a little bit. I'm not, now I'm not excited to play it again. <laughs> but honestly, it's a good tank. You know, don't don't let what I say persuade you to go away from it. It is a fantastic tank. Now, traverse speed of the turret, you're looking at 40 degrees. Traverse speed of the tracks. Scratch that. I believe that was the tracks. Stock. Okay, yeah, turret traverse is 36. Traverse speed of the tracks is 40. Now, terrain resistance inside this tank, you're not going to be noticing any difference from hard, medium, or soft. Your soft is 1, your hard is 4, point zero, like point 0.4. So, fantastic terrain resistance, along with your medium being 0.5. Soft terrain at 1.0, honestly, you're not going to be noticing it too much. You're going to be just cruising along, and once you hit that soft terrain, you know, you'll feel a little bit of a drag, but nothing much. This tank is highly mobile. Now, with the 15.63 power to weight that the tank offers up, you do not need the power terrain at all. You can get away with running the traction system for the plus 10% haul rotation speed and plus 10% top speed. That would actually be the better bet to go for rather than a gun rammer because the gun rammer on the tank... In my opinion, I don't see the advantage. On a lot of my mediums, I usually prefer to run advanced concealment since it's now a permanent effect and it's just going to be making a real big difference with your mediums along with silent driving combined with it. Silent driving is a perk I recommend for all medium tanks. I don't care if it's a heavy medium, a lightweight medium, or whatever it is. Having 
the advanced camo net and silent driving combined, it just makes you a lot harder to spot out and usually gives you an extra comfort zone of about 70 meters to 50 meters, depending on what type of medium that you're playing around inside. So signal range at 750, that's not bad either. That's going to be really nice to have. And you're not going to be feeling much of a difference with the, the assist damage because radio range is primarily assist damage. Now, with my current setup, we're going to actually have to bring up OBS for a split second. But as time goes on, you know, we'll get that fixed up, make it to where we don't have to have OBS on the same screen because right now we're running off one monitor rather than the two we had before. So a little bit off. But one of the biggest advantages that this tank has is the 160% rather than the 150% that most other premiums have for their silver earn rate. So primarily, this tank's making a really good amount of silver every single match, even if it's on a loss. And let's say you only did your hit points worth of damage, which is 1,400. Honestly, 1,400 hit points, not bad either. It's, it's really nice to have that. Now, we're going to bring up OBS real quick, and we can be fast about this. There we go. See, that was quick. Nice and simple. So I don't really know what else to go over about the tank, except for how I feel about it. So with the FV4202P, one of the biggest downsides to this tank that I have personally is the way that the armor is set up, you cannot brawl. If you get close to somebody, you know, you're let this this is your turret armor. Once you start brawling and you're brawling against a tank that's smaller than you, you're you're not gonna have much of a problem unless they have over 200 penetration going right through the lower part of your turret. Now, if they're above you, for instance, I had this experience against a mutant and he just had to aim down and shoot straight into my forehead and he was going straight through the forehead of the tank every single shot. So brawling inside this tank, I do not recommend it. However, long range combat to mid range combat, absolutely fantastic. Relying on that 50 millimeters of side armor, you know, as much as you can as well. You know, side scraping being able to pull out. The turret armor is not too bad when it comes down to side scraping, as long as you're not overexposing it whenever you don't need to really overexpose it. So slight pop outs, you know, pull out a little bit, try and bait a shot. And even the front plate, if you want to try and bait a shot into that front plate, the front plate is actually at the angle it's at, coming around a corner, you, you can straight up bounce rounds left and right and just have an absolute blast inside this. Now, right off the bat here, we're playing a little bit of aggressive on KO Bang. Um, I have stated my opinions about the new maps inside the rotation. The Cold War maps, in my opinion, they are not suited for World War II matchmaking. Slower tanks are going to be at a massive disadvantage, while the faster tanks are taking full control of these newer maps and absolutely dominating the battlefield. Um, with these newer maps, I'm actually not playing my slower tanks as much as I used to because they do not feel like they are part of the meta with these maps in rotation right now. However... You know, you, we can't really say that because then, you know, it's like you say it and then all of a sudden you end up on El Haloof and now you're stuck inside of a Leopard 1 or you're stuck inside of a, a faster medium tank with less armor on a really small map like Himmel's Dwarf or whatever. So primarily the way that the matchmaking is put together, y you are filling it just a little bit, but not enough to really... Now, screw with it too much, but at the same time, I feel like I'm seeing the new maps way too much and they need to be slowed down. I'd like to see the regular maps in rotation a lot more inside Cold War. And for World War II, well, not Cold War, but yeah, for Cold War, they should see these maps a lot more. World War II matchmaking, it should be 10% of the time, not 80% of the time. Now, as you guys can see here, we ricocheted two rounds from a tier 10 medium tank so far off to a really good start. And 219 damage dealt, 70 assisted. So we haven't done a lot of damage, but we were able to show off how the armor works, being able to pull up. And sadly, these are the only two ricochets we get for the entire game. The rest of this is primarily trying to rely on the concealment and peekaboo tactics to try and avoid taking shots. Now, as we're backing up, we do get a little bit flat and sadly, if we would have stayed on that hill just a little bit longer, that enemy was RB locking. So if we tried staying on top of the hill and pulled up just a little bit, more than likely it would have been an auto ricochet and we would have had a third ricochet. But without thinking about it, we did just get hit and we got, you know, we lost a little bit of hit points, which it's a tier 10 and bouncing two rounds consistently from a tier 10, you know, not bad, not bad at all. Coming up, trying to get his attention, 217 into his side armor there, and then, you know, just trying to reverse out, trying to get him 
to get exposed for a team that's along the ridge line towards the back of us, seeing what they can do. And as you guys can tell, the armor on this tank, whenever it comes down to that close quarters brawling, we were in a lot of trouble. The weight of the vehicle, it doesn't weigh a whole lot, so against those Russian mediums or against, you know, like other mediums primarily, this tank, you want to try and avoid the ramming, even if you have controlled impact or a spa liner on. Um, at this current moment in time, spa liners are still not working. However, in a few months after this video comes out, they might be updated, they might not. Um, I'll try to keep you guys updated on everything that is fixed and everything that does get updated. But so far, spa liners are actually only decreasing damage by about 20% rather than the 50% that they are saying, which means that the... Honestly, I'm going to double check right here since I have the game open. Because they're labeling a 730,000 price tag for silver, and they're not even working the way that they're supposed to be working. So with explosive defense and ramming, rather than the 50%, you're lucky to see 20 to 15% reduction, even with all the perks applied for the 5% damage reduction perk, and along with, I believe it's called advanced armor damage from enemy weapons minus 5%, um, 20%. That's it. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit sad that they haven't fixed it. It's been quite some time that it's been like this ever since they dropped 6.0. And, you know, just it feels like they've been slacking off and updating some things, which I would like to see them get them fixed rather than adding new content and adding more premium tanks into the game. You know, I'd, I'd like to see them put a halt on that for a little while just because I want the game to be fixed. I want the game to be nice. I want people to jump on and be like, wow, this feels great. I want to invest days of gameplay in this. And I want to get up in the tier 10, you know, because that's what we got to do. We got to try and get the new player base into the game rather than pushing them away. And a lot of the price tags right now on equipment is just outrageous, along with the cost of the crews at 500,000, kind of expensive, but we'll go on a rant another day, not today, not today. Today's about the FB4 202P. Honestly, this British medium, you know, the rate of fire that it has, the view range that you got, the still concealment that you have, especially if you're running advanced concealment, it feels really good. However, my play style, this is not my style of tank, but I like it. You know, it's like, it's a different paste. You, you pull it out, and for me, you know, I play a little bit more passively inside this tank, especially inside tier 10 matchmaking like you're seeing inside this match right now. So... Off to a really good start. Waffle Panzer IV, we put a, you know, I believe we put one or two rounds in the hen. Uh, poor little VK stuck out in the open. And a 113 that, you know, we kind of didn't want to go up against. So taking a couple pop shots, trying to keep everything it's spotted out. Off to a really good start, you know. About seven minutes, seven minutes into the match. 1700 assisted, 2000 dealt. You know, honestly, solid tank. Armor on it, it's a little bit confusing to try and get used to at first. But as you play it a little bit longer, you're going to realize that the tracks are huge. Your hull armor is at a fantastic angle, which means you can kind of overexpose. And every single once in a while, people are going to be aiming at the drive hole and go through the drive hole and actually just ricochet off the top armor. So I put about 15 matches inside this tank before we got this recording. And honestly, worked out really well. Like, nothing really felt bad about it. You know, it... it Feels like almost any British medium tank, but with a super heavy, you know, super heavily slanted top plate with 50 millimeters. You know, sadly, it's going to get overmatched by 152s and inside tier 10 matchmaking. There's not a lot of them, but there's enough. So pulling out against those guns, you know, you want to try and just avoid it. Play peekaboo, pop in and out as much as you can and just not overexpose. Along with the price tag of 7,300 gold. Solid. Like, honestly, it, it's it's not expensive compared to most. And at the same time, it's not the cheapest. But for the price that it, the price tag that it does have and the silver urn that it's going to be getting you, if you're new to the game and you're looking for a simple premium to get, this tank, I would recommend it. Because it's going to be a great learning tank and trying to learn those auto, auto ricochet angles. And once you get them down, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Just know that whenever enemies are firing above you inside the FV, you're going to be feeling it lacking just because most of your armor is going to be flat against them, which means they're just going to be able to go right through it if they're firing from above. So relocating and using that power to weight, using the top speed that the tank offers, the view range and everything else, you can be aggressive. 
don't get me wrong, you can be aggressive. But you want to try and rely more on that mid-range more than the close range. So getting in close, be my guest. But you don't want to get so close to where your armor becomes weak. You know, and it, it's kind of weird to say that because getting in close, you know, the closer you get, the weaker armor becomes. It It's kind of true because of the way that it's set up. Not not exactly meant to be jumping it out. Now, this match, we made a hefty profit of over 205,000 silver. Honestly, fantastic. You know, great tank. The, in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with it except for I would like to see them implement the PC buffs that they did, which is no joke. 0.8 meters of armor and that's not asking for much so that just makes it to where 152s can't go through the armor so simple would i recommend this tank i would i would recommend this tank um there are some tanks that i won't recommend and we're going to be doing one of those next and you guys will be able to see which tank i'm talking about once it comes out but until then dude i hope you guys liked the video you know I, seriously this took me like Nine tries. I've been at it for like three hours to be able to get this to you guys in crisp condition. Learning a couple of things about the tank that I didn't even realize was going on. Honestly, I had to restart because I said that the armor was 50.8 and then I was sitting there talking about it for like five minutes. And then I stopped and looked at the armor viewer inside game and I realized we don't have that buff. And then I decided to look it up and they buffed it like two years ago over on PC and console never got the buff. And I was just like, oh crap, restart. Problem solved, we're back up, we're good. No, we're not, another one popped up. And it was so simple too, like I just started it and I double clicked. So I started it, stopped recording and I was talking for like 10 minutes to nobody. So yeah, if you guys liked it, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Seriously, leave a like, you have no idea how much it helps me. The like factor, let's break it. Like seriously, if this video can get up to like 50, I think that would be like my number one. So I'm just kidding. Screw it. Put a dislike. That that'd make me happy too. <laughs> it doesn't matter which one you guys choose. But you know, if you disliked it, yeah, dislike it. Other than that, dude, if you guys want to catch me over on Twitch and you want to request to see a tank, be my guest, jump over there. If I had the silver to buy it, I will buy it. Maybe, depending on what I'm doing. Because I have been spending a crap ton of silver. Uh a stream I had a couple days ago. I spent about 11 million on stream, just outfitting tanks and getting setups, trying out different builds. So if you guys do have questions, you know, catch one of the live streams, get a link to the Discord, or if you want one, leave a comment, like leave a comment asking for a Discord link. I will take the time out to get one sent to you and, you know, letting you know, because if you guys have any questions about setups, what to run, it'll be fantastic. And I think the next video that we should be doing is going to be more focused around perks, equipment, power to weight, top speed, you know, with your reloads and everything else, what equipment to be running on what tanks and my reasons why. So in my opinion, the reason why I recommend this. So, ooh, about freaking burped. Until next time, catch you guys in the battlefield. I'm a nerd and I know it.